So, we meet again. Hey, you guys. Um, we will get started in uh, five minutes, the usual uh, two o'clock East Coast time. So good to see those of you who are streaming into the room. I see it's 12 of us are here so far. Um, and I'll say hi to Grant in Virginia. I'm so glad you could make it, Grant. And uh, Reed's here. Hi, Reed. Reed, R-E-E-D. Reed. And Molly and Emma in uh, Louisiana are here. Ian and Erica. New Book Monday, that's right. Darcy's here. Hi, Darcy. Uh, and uh, Janelle. Um, Joshua and Sophia are here. Javen and Johan. Gabby and Tiago, Tiago in Florida. Uh, Max in Montana. Hi. Uh, Clark in Iowa. Nice to see ya. Amy from New York State. Okay. Bennett's here. Hi. That was my wife. Lola from Illinois. Uh, Naomi and Casey from California. Hi. Uh, Haley from Washington State, I guess. Janelle. <clears throat> Natalia from Fresno. Okay, the Searle Squad. Hi to all of you. Lyra, thanks for coming. Got 116 of us now. Jack and John from Arkansas. I think that's Arkansas, A-R. Uh, Josh in Connecticut. Isabella is here. Uh, Phoenix from, Ar from Virginia. <laughs> uh, Molly from Evanston, Illinois says hi. Abigail and Bridget in Iowa. Uh, William in New York, hi. And we'll get started in... Uh, about uh, three minutes or so. Three minutes. Hi, Leo. Hi, Ben. Now we got 124 of us. Um, Tyler in New York. Hi, Tyler. You still have time to get your friends in here. Jackson, uh, your cousins, your friends from all over town, all over the country. Alana and Jeremy, get your cousins in here. The Druckmans, the Druckmans, get your cousins. <laughs> Aaron from New Jersey. Um, so that we can uh, have a big group of us here. Odie. Hi, Odie. Uh, Marianne. We'll get started in uh, a little more than two minutes. Uh, Braden and Michaela from Georgia. Uh, Addie and Abby from Groton, Massachusetts. Thayer in Virginia. Uh, Connor, Kaylee, and I missed that one, sorry. Uh, Aylin is here from Mineola. Hi Bryce, how you doing? In Michigan. Connor and Aiden. Connor and Reagan from New Jersey. Um, gonna have some fun today. Audrey and Caitlin coming in. We got about less than two minutes to go. Skyla, hi. Uh, I didn't catch that one. Aylin, I already said that. Okay. Uh, Ion and Anaya in New Jersey are here. Thank you. Gonna have a lovely day today. Looks like a beautiful day. Really hot today, at least uh, where I am. Rodrigo in Basking Ridge. It's like 90 degrees out today. Jesse from Oakland. Uh, so I'm gonna stay inside. I closed the door to hold some of the air conditioning in. Megan and Ellie. Uh, Daniel from Marstown, New Jersey. We got to about a minute to go. Uh, hi, Brooke. Hey, Patrick. You guys ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Kara. Hi, Kara. You ready? How about Jacob? You ready? Eric and Anders from Georgia. Are you ready? I hope so. It's not go time yet. We still have another 40 seconds. Scotty from Kentucky. Billy Sickles. It's about time you got here, Billy. I wasn't going to start without you, you know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we got, ooh, half a minute to go. Theo, Eric, Anders, Georgia, Sandy and Stacy, Tatiana, Oliver in Philly. We got... Well, about 10 seconds. Laney and Ben, Connecticut. Okay, we got, oh, four, five, four, three, two, one. It's go time, baby. Hi. 
Dan Gutman here. I am the guy who writes the My Weird School books, and this is number 70 in our series, My Weird Read Aloud, our 70th one, going towards 100. We got 30 more to go. Today is Monday, and you know what that means? Yes, we're starting a new book today. But first, let's do our question of the day, which is from Hunter and Talon in California, who asked, when did you come up with My Weird School? How old were you? Uh, well, the first book came out in 2004, <clears throat> which means I wrote it in 2003. I was uh, 48 years old then, and I'm 64 years old now. Now you know. Okay, our book of the week is Ms. Cuddy is Nutty, which is number two in the My Weirdest School series. Uh, this book has 11 chapters, so we are going to read three of them today, and that way the rest of the week we can knock out two a day finish the book on Friday. Okay, so let's get started right away with chapter one. Gather around your big screen TV, your laptop, your tablet, and chapter one is titled, How Do You Like Them Apples? All right, here we go. My name is AJ and I hate it when my school gets attacked by monsters. I should explain. It all started the other day when our new teacher, Mr. Cooper, came flying into the room. And I do mean flying. Mr. Cooper thinks he's a superhero. But he's not a very good one because he knocked over the garbage can and fell on the floor. Stuff spilled all over the place. And here's Jim's first picture of the book of Mr. Cooper taking a header <laughs> doing a face plant as he comes into the room, as he tends to do when he comes into a room. <clears throat> we all ran over to help him up. Mr. Cooper had a black plastic bag in his hand and a letter A on his cape. It is I, he announced. Apple Man. Apple Man, asked Ryan and Michael. Who ever heard of a superhero named Apple Man, asked Alexia, who rides a skateboard all the time. Today we're going to learn about apples, said Mr. Cooper. Why, asked Neil, who we call the nude kid even though he wears clothes. Because it's part of the common core, said Mr. Cooper. Get it? Nobody got it. But Mr. Cooper didn't care. He took some apples out of his bag and passed them around. Here's a picture of Mr. Cooper uh, passing around some apples to uh, the kids in the class. <clears throat> when I was a kid, we used to say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, Mr. Cooper told us. You threw apples at doctors, I asked. Then everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. <clears throat> Did you know there are 7,000 kinds of apples grown all over the world, Mr. Cooper asked us. But only one is native to North America, the crab apple. I know something about apples said Andrea Young, this annoying girl with curly brown hair. If you put an apple in water, it won't sink. Apples have a lot of air in them. Very good, Andrea, said Mr. Cooper. Andrea fist bumped her friend Emily, the big crybaby. Then she smiled the smile that she smiles to let everybody know that she knows something nobody else knows. She thinks she is so smart. Why can't a truck full of apples fall on her head? Mr. Cooper told us it was time for math. <clears throat> if there are six apples on a table and you take away four of them, how many do you have? Mr. Cooper asked. Andrea was waving her hand in the air like she needed to be rescued from a desert island. Two apples, she said, because six minus four is two. Then she made her smiley smile again. No, said Mr. Cooper. If there are six apples on a table and you take away four of them, you have four of them, of course. You just took four of them away. But, 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 but. We all laughed because Andrea said but, which sounds like but, even though it only has one T. Ha, 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 ha. Na, 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 boo, boo on Andrea. Mr. Cooper taught us lots of interesting stuff about apples. Did you know that gravity was discovered when an apple fell on some guy's head? Me neither. 
That's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. The morning announcements came over the loudspeaker. Well, that's not the amazing part because the morning announcements come over the loudspeaker every morning. The amazing part was what happened after that. I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. All right, chapter two is titled A Surprise Guest. Ooh. Our school secretary, <clears throat> Mrs. Patty, does the morning announcements every day. We pledge the allegiance, and then she tells us the weather, what's for lunch, and who has birthdays that day. It's pretty boring. At the end of today's announcements, Mrs. Patty said, All students and teachers, please report to the all-purpose room for a surprise assembly. We had to walk single file a million hundred miles to the all-purpose room. Mr. Cooper made us sit boy, girl, boy, girl, so we wouldn't sit next to anybody we liked. I had to sit between Andrea and Emily. Here's Jim's picture of the kids sitting in the all-purpose room waiting for the surprise assembly to get started. <clears throat> Our principal, Mr. Klutz, climbed up on the stage. He has no hair at all. I mean none. He used to have hair, but it fell out or something. Everybody was buzzing. Well, not really. People don't buzz. Bees buzz. It would be weird if people buzzed like bees. But we were all talking. Mr. Klutz held up his hand and made a peace sign, which means, shut up. Thank you, he said. We have a very special guest at elementary school today. We all buzzed some more. And you'll never believe who walked out on the stage at that moment. Nobody. Because somebody rolled out on the stage in a wheelchair. It was Mrs. Ella Mentry. Ella Mentry is a really old lady who used to teach at our school a million hundred years ago. She must have been a good teacher because after she retired, the school was named after her. There's a big sign on the grass out front that says, Ella Mentry School. Here's a picture of uh, Mrs. Mentry rolling out on the stage uh, with Mr. Um, Klutz. One time when Mrs. Mentry came to our school, things got out of hand and there was a food fight. Pickle chips and meatballs and burritos and tater tots were flying through the air. It was cool. We gave Mrs. Mentry a standing ovation. A standing ovation is when everybody gets up from their seats and claps their hands. When you stand up and clap your hands, it's a lot better than when you, when you just sit there and clap your hands. Nobody knows why. At first, I wasn't going to stand up, but all the teachers stood up. Then a few kids stood up, and then a lot more kids stood up. And then I felt like I would look like a dork if I didn't stand up, so I stood up. While we were clapping, Mr. Klutz dragged out a big white piece of cardboard. It was about the size of a door. <clears throat> Mrs. Mentry has brought a gift for the school today, Mr. Klutz announced. She's given us a door, I asked. What do we need a door for? We have plenty of doors. It's not a door, Arlo, Andrea said, rolling her eyes. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. It's a check. Mrs. Mentry is donating money to our school, dumbhead. I wanted to say something mean to Andrea, but all I could think of was, your face looks like a door. In my head, I was wondering why Mrs. Mentry's check was so big. My parents used checks, and their checks were about the size of a dollar bill. Why would anybody need to have a check the size of a door? I can imagine how big Mrs. Mentry's wallet is. Mr. Klutz handed the microphone to Mrs. Mentry. Thank you for that wonderful welcome, she said. I will always have a special place in my heart for this school. And to show my appreciation, I would like to give this to you. Mr. Klutz turned the check around so we could see the other side. 
and this is what it looked like. In case you're counting, those are six zeros. Six zeros. <clears throat> what? A million dollars, I shouted. A million dollars, shouted Alexia. A million dollars, shouted Ryan. In case you were wondering, we were all shouting a million dollars. Everybody started yelling and screaming and shrieking and hooting and hollering and generally freaking out. You should have been there. All right, that's chapter two. How about chapter three? We're going to go for three today? All right, it's titled, A Hundred Thousand Pizzas. Nobody could believe elementary was actually giving the school a million dollars. Man, that lady must have a ton of money to be giving away so much of it. No wonder she needs such big checks. There are a lot of zeros in a million. We gave Mrs. Mentry another standing ovation. Then Mr. Klutz made the shut up peace sign again and we all got quiet. We can't thank you enough, Mrs. Mentry, he said. But now we have a problem. What are we gonna do with this money? That, that's a problem? If you ask me, a problem is when you have no money at all. I'll spend it for you, shouted our librarian, Mrs. Rupee. Everybody laughed. Tell you what I'm going to do, Mr. Klutz said. We're going to have a contest to decide what to do with the money. Ooh, everybody ooed. Go back to your classrooms and think of some ideas for what we should do with the million dollars, Mr. Klutz told us. The class that comes up with the best idea will be the first to use whatever we buy with the money. I'll announce the winning class at the end of the day. We walked a million hundred miles back to our classroom. So, Mr. Cooper said when we were seated, what do you think we should buy with the million dollars? Pizza, Ryan shouted. We should have a giant pizza party for the whole school. Yeah, everybody yelled. Ryan should be in the gifted and talented program for coming up with that idea. Who doesn't like pizza? <clears throat> do you know how many pizzas you can buy with a million dollars, Mr. Cooper asked? He went to the board and wrote the number one million on it. He told us a pizza cost about $10. Then he divided the one million by 10. And here's Mr. Cooper doing a little his little math problem on the board for the kids. Uh, yeah. If uh, one pizza costs $10 and you have a million dollars, how many pizzas can you buy? <clears throat> oh, a hundred thousand pizzas, shouted Andrea. That's a lot of pizza, said Michael. I can only eat one or two slices, said Emily. Me too, said Alexia. We can freeze the rest for leftovers, said Neil. That's what we do at home. May I ask where we will put all that leftover pizza, asked Mr. Cooper. I know, said Alexia. We can buy a thousand refrigerators. Yeah, everybody shouted. And where are we going to put a thousand refrigerators, asked Mr. Cooper. In the playground, Michael said. Yeah, everybody shouted. As long as we're getting all those refrigerators, said Neil. Let's buy a million dollars worth of ice cream. I like ice cream better than pizza. Yeah, everybody shouted. Why don't we just buy a million dollars worth of candy, I suggested. Then we won't need any refrigerators. Yeah, everybody shouted. We were coming up with some really good ideas. I was sure that our class would win the contest. I hate to tell you this, said Mr. Cooper, but Elementary did not give us a million dollars to buy junk food. She wants us to buy something useful for the school. We need to think outside the box. I didn't see any boxes around. If I was in a box, I know what I would be thinking about. How to get out of the box. We could buy a racing car with a million dollars, suggested Michael. Maybe we could buy a football team, suggested Neil. How about a skate park, Alexia suggested. 
Why not give the million dollars to a school that doesn't have any money, suggested Emily. Our school doesn't have any money, I told her. Well, we have money now, said Emily. We have a million dollars. But if we gave the million dollars to a school that doesn't have any money, I told her, then we would be a school that doesn't have any money again. Maybe we should put the money in the bank, suggested little Miss Perfect. Then we could watch it grow. Banks are boring, I said. Well, what if we did something educational with the money, suggested Mr. Cooper. Ugh, he said the E word. Educational stuff is boring, I said. Well, A.J., said Mr. Cooper, what is not boring to you? I tried to think of something that isn't boring. It was hard, because most stuff is boring. TV, I finally said. TV isn't boring. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. I know, I said. We should buy one of those big flat screen TVs for our class. That would be cool. Yeah, everybody shouted. A flat screen TV doesn't cost a million dollars, Mr. Cooper told us. For a million dollars, we could buy a whole TV station. Well, I said, then we should buy our own TV station. That's it, shouted Mr. Cooper. AJ, you're a genius. And that's chapter three. Tomorrow, we'll get started on chapter four, boats. But before we go, uh, let's do our, question, our, our joke of the day. You guys ready for the joke of the day? It's from PJ in Maryland who gave me this joke. <clears throat> Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Hmm? Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Give up? Because he was outstanding in his field. Get it? Outstanding in his field? <laughs> I love that joke. All right. Thanks to Josh Solzman and Ryan Cunningham for our theme song, Let's Do It. You know it, okay? Let's do it. Man, is that man nuts? Okay, you guys, see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Until then, read like crazy, wash your hands like crazy too. Bye.